Hey Land Party Gamers! This is going to be a little bit different from what you normally see on this channel where we're showing you some of the newer gear and some of the more impressive stuff that shows up at our lands. This kind of takes us back to retro gaming and when most people think of retro gaming at our LAN parties they're thinking, oh we're going to get the projector going and play uh, N64 or we're going to play on the Super Nintendo kiosk in the living room. Well, we're PC gamers and our roots are in PC gaming, of course. So here we have an old Pentium 4 with an AGP graphics card and uh, a lot of peripherals that you would have seen back before the year 2000. And we're going to show you how we rebuilt this old uh, Dell system here, how we got uh, Windows 98 SE on it, and even a user-made service pack to make it work with modern networks. Stay tuned and we'll show you exactly uh, what retro gaming is to us as far as PCs go. This, my friends, is a Dell Dimension 8200. Now, originally this computer came with Windows XP on it, but it was a very early XP machine, which means a lot of its hardware was also compatible with Windows 98 SE. So that's the version of the operating system that we chose to put on this system uh, for this project. This is something that we've been working on the last year or two, and we've got a lot of software that was donated for this project from people that have come to the lands, people that uh, wanna see their old games from their childhood but simply won't run on Windows 10 or uh, 7. So they say, hey, install this game, we'll find a, a crack for it on uh, the game copy world or something will install the game with a disc or in some cases with a floppy and uh, Get it going and that's how we had to run this thing now This thing is sporting 256 megs of RD RAM and 128 meg uh, GeForce NVIDIA card right there in the AGP slot pretty powerful specs considering that it thinks it's from 1998 the way that we got to install the Windows 98 operating system is that you have to boot into the floppy. So you make a bootable floppy disk, you can find the bootable files on Windows website, or you can actually create a boot disk within Windows itself, depending on your version. You tell the BIOS to go ahead and boot from that, and then you simply load into a full install of Windows 98 SE. Uh, you can find an ISO online and uh, get started. The real trick to running this is Windows 98 had uh, no um, support for very large hard drives, and I'm talking over 16 or 32 gigs. So what we do is we have an 8 gig onboard drive, that's our C drive, that's our Windows and all of our programs, because 8 gigs is a lot for back then, and that's pretty much as much as the OS wants to see. However, there is a crack, NTFS for 98 and we'll try to put that in the link in the description below, and that'll let your OS, your Windows 98 SE OS, to read uh, file sizes of larger than 250 gigs. So we have a second hard drive in here for storing things like ISOs, for storing the downloads that we get off of Firefox, and yes, this is running a full copy of Firefox 2. Firefox 2, in fact, it's the oldest one we could find that was built that will work with this operating system. Um, then, you, once you install all that, you have to find service packs. Now, obviously, the service packs for Windows aren't available <laughs> anymore for Windows 98. So what we're doing is we uh, found there's a user-compiled uh, service pack for Windows 98, and it basically takes all the important security updates, everything that is driver-based, anything that is super important to have on your 98 SE system that will maintain its functionality and it puts it all in one giant user-made service pack. So uh, we'll see if we can find that and put that in the description below. But that's how we got this system up and running. And this is what we bring to LANs to show in our retrocade, or if somebody else has a retrocade in an event, we put it right there next to the N64. We put it right there next to the PS1 and show, hey, PC gaming has a lush uh, history as well. And we want to make sure people can try it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort of go through the Windows 98 operating system on this show you how similar it is and where they're basing a lot of our current operating system off of it. And uh, maybe we'll even show you as many of the games as we can in the time we have. So uh, let's, let's get started. 
Alrighty, well, I apologize for not having a capture card that can capture uh, from Windows 98, and I'm pretty sure OBS isn't going to work on this operating system, but uh, you should be able to see what I'm saying here, and just listen to that beautiful sound. That is the Windows 98 startup sound, and it actually boots fairly quick for how old it is, and considering it's on an old IDE hard drive. You can actually hear it spinning up now, and uh, let's give this thing a whirl. So we used uh, the stock Windows 98 background just to entice people, say, hey, come on over and uh, check this piece of history out. And speaking of history, let me show you some of our peripherals. We've got a PC Flight Pro joystick that actually has suction cups on the bottom and uh, has different switches on the bottom depending on where you want to zero in uh, the, con the controller here. Uh, it, this plugs into the joystick port on the back, which is on the sound card. The sound card is a Sound Blaster Pro that actually has uh, front panel jacks for this case. So we were able to actually find the correct card for this case, thankfully. Uh, has, it only has, uh, it has no on onboard audio, and it only has two USB ports on the back of the case. So having those extra two on the front and having those headphone jacks working is really nice. This monitor is actually a gift, again, from the community from helping us build this out. We like this because it matches the aesthetic of everything else. And it's actually a touch screen, although we can't really get it to work uh, until we find drivers for it. This was actually for a point of sale device, I think, at a FedEx office. So a uh, big shout out to Daniel, who got us this a while back. It works with this really good, and it has built-in speakers so that when you're playing games, other people can enjoy them as well with you. Uh, the keyboard is actually a Dell OEM keyboard. You might have actually seen this shipped with this very computer. It uses the uh, PS2 port, and uh, when we talk about a PS2 keyboard, no, I'm not talking about the GameShark keyboard I bought to play SOCOM 2 with. No, this is using the PS2 round jack in the back of the computer, and it really gives you a sense of uh, what it was like to have limited ports back then. You needed to use those PS2 ports because we only have two USBs on the back. So it was nice to have this keyboard to help free up those USBs. Another one that helped out was a PS2 mouse, and not only any PS2 mouse. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is a trackball mouse that we've got rolling in here. So we can actually use this, and it's very smooth. As long as you kept these things cleaned out, and you kept the ball clean on the inside, and you kept the tracks on the inside where the ball touches, they're fairly smooth. I mean, this is what people used to play games on, and in fact, this is what we'll be playing on today. First thing that was interesting to me with Windows 98 is all of the keyboard shortcuts that I got used to from XP, Vista 7, and on started in this era, or possibly even Windows 95. Things like uh, window key pause break, bringing up the system properties, Alt F4, closing things, or even closing windows if I wanted to. Uh, the start button, bringing up the start menu, really all of that was from this era. So if you're used to using Windows shortcuts, to uh, navigate your Windows experience, Windows 98 is not going to be a huge jump from what you're used to. So we talked about, uh, let's talk about the games that we have installed on this computer. We've got quite a few. We've got a game shortcut on the desktop that leads us into the Start Menu Programs Files folder of our Games menu. And in here we've got Alien vs Predator, Battle Realms, Beast Wars, Black and White, Black Hawk Down, Doom, Duke Nukem, Frogger 2, Half-Life, Indiana Jones, and the Temple and the Infernal Machine. Excuse me, that one was actually uh, a request that we install the Infernal Machine from uh, the drumming PC, or as he's known around here as Trues. And uh, it, he brought that over, we installed it, and uh, he <laughs> played it for a good hour at one of the lands. Uh, we've got a bunch of DOS games. We've got Jedi Knight 1, Populous, Postal 1, Red Alert 2, uh, Sid Meier's, SimCity, Voyager Elite Force from Star Trek, Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds. Of course, we've got Star, uh, Starcraft and Brood War on here, uh, Star Siege Tribes, even Stepmania works. Obviously, the dance pad has an issue, but you can play it on the keyboard. Uh, more SimCity games, including The Sims and Streets of, uh, Total Annihilation, Tribes 2, Unreal Tournament 1, Warcraft, and I believe Warcraft 2. Yeah, both Warcraft 1 and 2 are on here. Uh, and then a whole bunch of these other games like Far Cry, Ghost Recon, Initial D, Army Men, Flight Simulator 95, and more. So actually, that brings us to our first game that we're going to try. I'm going to show you um, Flight Simulator 95 as the very first 
flight sim game on home PC. I actually went to a launch event for this at uh, the fleet, uh, what was, it was the uh, Aerospace Museum in Balboa Park, where they had real pilots taking you through and showing you how to take off virtually on a Windows 95 computer. So here we are, Windows 98, going back to my childhood, and we're gonna boot up Flight Simulator and see how it goes. So we've got, uh, this is Flight Simulator 95. This is, again, the very first Flight Simulator for Windows the, that really tried to simulate uh, flight. So let's just fly now and see where we've got. It's telling us that there's no uh, CD in the drive because we don't have the disk in there, but that's fine. It'll run without it. Communication, request to land. There we go, request to land. Microsoft Flight Simulator requesting the landing clearance. Bam. Microsoft Flight Simulator, you are cleared to land. See that? We got permission right there. So we're going to go ahead and go full flaps. Oh, oh, oh. And we're going to cut the power here. And we got... Gonna, we're coming in nice and slow. Oh, no! No! Into the drink! And we're dead. Okay, so that was Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs> So we're gonna try Tribes now. Tribes was a favorite of mine. This is what really got me into PC shooters back in my youth. Uh, this was a favorite and actually a competitor to games like uh, Doom or, or Quake. Uh, Unreal, actually, was probably, Unreal Tournament and Quake were probably its two biggest things. So uh, this is actually a newer version than what we had back then. This is actually a user-made version that has a lot of uh, a lot of upgrades, a lot of stability upgrades, and this will run on modern computers now with 1.30. Um, so this is Tribes, and oh, it's thinking. Okay, here we go. So in this, you have your your guns, you've got your jumps, but you have if you've ever played the new versions of Tribes, a jetpack. And there's a guy shooting at me already. Now, people still play this old version of Tribes. This is a bot game. This is a training mode. And the bots are actually quite good. Uh, they're very, very accurate. They're very... They, they don't have a lot of... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? They don't have a lot of different guns that they use. So I'm able to capture this. And that turns this turret into my turret. Bam. And I think there were some goodies at the top here. Yep. So there's a health pack. And let's get rid of that gun and pick up this gun. So now we've got a sniper rifle. And the sniper rifle uh, is a laser gun requires the uh, pack that we're wearing. Let's see if we can snipe him out. Gotta wait for my pack to recharge. Bam, got him. And then we gotta get in there before the turret gets me. Gotta freak it out. I'm not sure if there's a guy down here or not. Oh, doesn't look like it. Now, a lot of people that play RTS are gonna know this one. This is obviously StarCraft, and uh, we've got the CD uh, and, an, and a crack that lets us play some of the uh, single player uh, without it. So, looks like Brood War needs the CD in there. Let's just try the standard StarCraft and see if it works. Looks like it does. 
Not too bad, we can play the Terran campaign without the CD on Windows 98 as it was meant to be. Not too bad. Loads pretty quick too. See how it looks, see how it runs. Not bad. Sounds good, looks good. Got the arrow keys moving thing here. Oh, look, he wants to join our party. All right, that's cool. Yeah. All the commands work. I mean, this is great. This is working great. So that's StarCraft obviously working. I haven't tried it online, but uh, I don't see why it wouldn't work if, if it's still, if the service is still running. So that's StarCraft. Now this is a game I played as a kid. This is Red Alert 2. Uh, this is the Command and Conquer series. And there is even a version of this game for the expansion that works with today's computers. Um, you can find it online. They actually made a lobby mod that lets you play online Red Alert 2 again. But it looks like we can play Yuri's Revenge, or excuse me, Red Alert 2 without the expansion, without the CD. See how well it works. Loading off of this old hard drive. Not a terrible load time. I was expecting a lot longer. Oh my, okay, so it looks like I'm on the top left. There we go. That's Red Alert 2. So you might be thinking that a lot of these games are still works on uh, later versions of Windows. Well, let's take a look at something that you can do in Windows 98 that you really can't do uh, in modern version of Windows, and that's boot into MS-DOS mode. Now, Windows 95, Windows 98, and Windows 98 SE were more or less skins or wrappers booted from DOS, and here we are in MS-DOS. Uh, running from Windows, and uh, you can do a lot of commands that you can do in uh, in Windows itself. So you've got a lot of things in here that um, we can play a lot of these games that might not have been available to us inside of uh, Windows. So let's just see what kind of things we can do. Look at that, we got some SimCity, Zork, Oregon, Warcraft 1, X-Wing, uh, Treasure Mountain, uh, Wing Commander 2. Let's see what we can play here. Let's try X-Wing. Look at that, we're playing X-Wing on DOS. Oh man. R, oh God. The turbo cannons are firing at me. Dodge, dodge, dip, dive, duck. I got, I got to figure out how to fire quickly. Or I'm gonna ram into this thing. Oh, I'm dead. Boom. I have ejected safely. Whew. <laughs> well, looks like uh, the Imperials are gonna pick me up. So, uh, albeit without sound, this DOS game is working beautifully and what seems to be at full speed. So, although I suck at it, X-Wing X works really well on this Windows 98. Let's see what other games we can play uh, in DOS mode here on this computer. So here we have Oregon Trail and uh, it's, we're going to uh, try it out and see what it, how it works. 1992, Oregon Trail, looks like it's booting up to me. Oh, and it can even use the mouse. Look at that. I installed the mouse driver before I launched it 
and although I don't have any sound, this seems to work. Looks like there's no games to load, so we'll just start a new one. Uh, I'm going to be a doctor. And we'll just be boring old SDL. Look at all these women in my party. Okay. Oh, what do I want to buy? Well, I should buy like six oxen, uh, six sets of clothing, uh, 99 boxes of bullets, three spare wagon wheels, three spare wagon axles, that pounds of food. Oops. Thumbs lock has to be on. Oh, I can max out. Oh, except for the sets of clothing. So seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There we go. Bye. Okay, when do I want to start this travel here? Uh, if you leave too late, you might not get to Oregon before winter, which can be very dangerous. So let's leave in April. Eh. April 1st, 1848. You start down the trail with 20 oxen, 11 sets of clothing, yada, yada, yada. And $2. Okay. Oh, we're coming up on a river here. We've got a fjord this. So this was this was Oregon Trail. I mean, this was what people talk about when they talk about DOS gaming. Uh, at least at least uh, as a kid, this is something that we had to do. So uh, I've reached the Kansas River crossing. Well, how do we want to continue? Uh, I don't have I don't have five dollars for the ferry. So let's try to fjord for the river here. Oh no! And we're dead. Two members of my wagon already drowned. Mary and Emily are dead. And I lost all my oxen. <laughs> oh my god! And I took the wrong trail. This is how this is Oregon Trail. <laughs> I would already I would say, screw it. Uh let's just settle here. This looks nice. Uh you know what? Let's just let's just do this. Did I get across? Hey, I should have done that to begin with. Whew, that was terrible. Let's, let's, uh... I took the wrong trail again. Oh, man. I'll tell you what, this is what we're gonna do. How do, how, let's hunt, let's hunt something. This is what people really did in this game, right? They're here for the hunting, so let's kill some buffalo. Oh. Spend all our money on ammo. Well, these, these, these guys are faster than I thought they'd be. My twitch reflexes are... Oh, oh they dodging. There we go. End hunting. I bought back 200 pounds of food. <laughs> but I shot 558 pounds of food. All right. So you don't need that much ammo in this game. So anyway, Oregon Trail works beautifully, albeit a little bit artifacting here at the top and uh, no sound, uh, and that might be solved by running the, do the game actually through Windows, but you can boot straight into DOS with this thing, and the games run just fine. As we mentioned before, and as you saw on the inside of the computer, there are two hard drives in the system. We have our C drive, as I mentioned, this is where uh, the disk space for Windows is, this is where all the games are installed, and I stand corrected, it's a 12 and a half gig drive which means that we do have large disk support uh, on the Windows installation, but in order to get more, you actually have to have NTFS be able to be read with a non-NT operating system. So we're using a crack made by the users called the NTFS 498, I believe, and our D drive, which is where all of our storage are, we've got disk images and downloads saved onto this drive here. And if we take a look at the properties, we have 124 gigs free out of 150 gigs total on our D drive. So we actually have quite a bit of space on here. So all of these games that have been donated by the community, we could actually turn into ISOs and load onto here. And yes, you can actually get ISOs to run on Windows 98. We're actually, I believe we're using alcohol uh, to run ISOs on this. 
We also have some pretty cool uh, things on here that we'll show you now. As far as utilities, we wanna not just show you the experience of playing games back in the day, but how people use these computers uh, things like Adobe Reader. What? How did people look at PDFs back in the day? Windows, uh, Microsoft Office, 1995. We have an actual physical disk of 1995 Office that we put on here. So we've got the whole suite, Word, Excel, etc. cetera. Um, we've got uh, things, we've got, <laughs> we even have a copy of TeamViewer on here for some reason. I'm not sure why. But uh, we've even got Mozilla Firefox 2.0. So let's take a look and see how those compare and what they look like back then to what they might, what you might be used to now. We're back on the desktop here and I'm just gonna go show you some things that we can do that you might seem very used to. So first we go to this computer, my computer, and you've got your drive series. We've got a couple of CD drives, we've got a C drive and a D drive, and we've even got a floppy disk drive, which is empty right now, which is why it makes that sound. And then we even have a ISO reading drive that's a virtual drive. So that's pretty neat. Um, we can even look at web folders and things on the network uh, if we're able to. And uh, we actually do have a network card. So let's take a look at the internet first. Here we have Mozilla Firefox. A lot of people will use that. And uh, obviously as their, as their web browser. And here we are running version 2.0.0.11. 1998 Firefox, and it still works. This is a live Google search here. I mean, we could do speed test, and there, there it is. Windows uh, 98 is able to browse through um, modern day Google. Now, some things aren't gonna work. I mean, the image search still works. That's pretty cool. But let's try going to a more modern website like youtube.com. Well, this is where things start to break down. Your web browser is not gonna be supported in this. Uh, because it uses a newer version of HTML, then this thing knows how to render. But certain websites like news, or if you need drivers or DLLs, you can, uh, you can search for here. And in fact, let's take a, let's see here. Um, Windows DLLs. So there we go, there's a bunch of DLL files here we can download if we're missing something from, let's say our installed disk or something that needs a newer DLL to run a game than Windows 98 had. We could still go to these websites uh, and, and download it. In fact, let's take a look at the Microsoft support page. Oh, not all of them are working. Let's see if Wikipedia works. Look at that, Wikipedia loads just fine in this old browser. So there are quite a few websites that are still perfectly capable of loading in older versions of Firefox. Um, we decided to use Firefox in here primarily so we can have tab browsing, as you can see here. So tab browsing was a thing even back in 1998 if, with the right browser. So that's, uh, this, is, this is Firefox 2, and that is our browser of choice here on Windows 98 SE. Uh, we did try out a couple others from the day, but that one was the most modern that we could get without going past uh, uh, 2000 era technology. Uh, let's take a look at Microsoft Office 95. A lot of this stuff is gonna seem pretty familiar. I mean, Excel, although it looks very monochromatic, looks like it, you could blow this right out of a DOS shell. In fact, I bet you this program would run in DOS. You've got your normal cells, rows, columns, etc. Some things that it, it still did back then was it'll do charts so you can make you can make charts out of this look at that you could do all sorts of things with with this and here's here's a chart that I made in Excel just like you can today obviously the buttons are a little bit different and doesn't have all of the sharing things that you can do in today's Excel but it's still fairly fully featured for such an old product uh, also in um, Office 95 we've got Word Outlook Express, they didn't come with full version Outlook. You had to buy that separately back in the day. Uh, and then Schedule Plus, which got rolled into Outlook to these two products rolled into Outlook. Uh, and front page was actually a web page designer. Uh, you could also make printed documents with front page back in the day. So we've got Carmen, where in the USA is Carmen San Diego on CD-ROM? And it is still indeed in there. We've got the CD code, it might not even be required. So let's pop this in the tray and see what happens here. We're gonna take out our Far Cry 1 disc. 
and we're gonna pop in where in the USA is Carmen San Diego and see see how well this thing runs. So as soon as we pop it in the drive, it should auto run. There it is. Install. Continue. Set location. Let's see, where do we want this installing to? Program files. Continue. Oh, okay, so it really has to be on the root of the hard drive. That's interesting. I guess that was more of a thing back then. Continue, and it continues on the left instead of the right. Things are just a little bit different now. You've successfully installed, that was fast. Okay. Uh, creative, yeah. Uh, play. So I can hear the sound. It's very, it's very low. And so it has you play a bunch of these files uh, di with different drivers so that because there were so many different sound cards back then and they weren't all compatible with each other, it's asking me to try out these songs uh, and make sure that I can hear them. And then if it doesn't work, try a different one. So there, here is Carmen San Diego. I'm just going to put that in the games folder. And run. Oh. Oh no, it requires at least 256 colors. So here's a common issue, Every, little, little things like this. So let's see if we can't get up to this many colors here. Okay, so we go to settings, true color, 32 bit, 256 colors. Oh, that looks terrible. Let's try it again. Carmen San Diego. There we go. So it worked on uh, 256 colors. <laughs> Gosh. What's funny is it thought I was running in 16 color mode or 32 color mode. And there it is. So here's where in the USA is Carmen San Diego, and it's asking me to make a name. It'll give me clues. I'll try to find her. It's more or less a history lesson combined with geography. So now we have this game installed, and let's see if, if it will work without the, uh, the disc in there. So if we take the disc out. So uh, if we go here, and then we go to... I'm assuming, let's, let's take a look at where in the world. So we go to the W's. Doesn't look like where in the world Common San Diego is on here. W-H. Where's Waldo? Which is funny because I found him first. So it doesn't look like there's a no CD crack for this game. So we would have to put this game in the disk drive in order to play it. And that was the way that copy protection worked back in the day. Let's try uh, something else here. We've got... Here's a Disney's Game Break game, Timon and Pumbaa's Jungle Arcade, Jungle Games. And uh, got the disc right there. This was a game I used to play when I was stuck in the office at my parents' work. And they sat me down on a computer. They bought this game probably at a cheap price in, a, um, in an office depot or something off the rack. But you know what? It had a lot of good arcade games on here. And look at that. Dead bugs on the back. How lovely is that? Oh, here we go. Full setup. We'll install Jungle Games on your disc, eliminating the game for the Jungle CD uh, to be inserted. It only takes 60 megs. That's really nice that they allowed for full setup on this game, and we don't even have to worry about the disc being broken or what have you. So let's see here. We'll do a quick installation. Oh, listen to that. Woo! That's exciting. And let's give it a try. This is with a disc out of the system. Oh, looks like it's working to me. Look at this. Jungle pinball, bug drop.
sling shooter, burper. What do you think? I think I'm ready to play. Come on. Okay. Uh, so left flipper is Z key, right flipper is question mark, and up arrow is both. Okay. Let's give it a try. Oh, this brings back some memories of it sucking. Jesus. That's a, that guy just got cheated. Something's wrong with this game. <laughs> okay, this game's broken. It's gone through here three times in a row. Oh, I finally got to use my other flipper. This thing bounces a lot. Oh, I got a grub bonus. Oh, you know, I think the physics in this game can use a little work. So let's try some of the other games here. Uh, exit. Ah, hey, look at him dance. Well, that's Timon and Pumbaa's Jungle Arcade. Luckily, Alt F4 still works. This is our Windows 98 machine. This has actually made it out to quite a few Lanathons now, just as a put on the side, something for people to check out when they're not in a tournament, or if they just want some nostalgia for playing old games from their childhood. As you can see, we've got a lot of games that are installed that have been either from my personal collection or brought to us by uh, other members of the LAN. If you guys are coming down and you want to see if an old game of yours will run on this Windows 98 computer, feel free to bring it by. The CD drives are working, the hard drive's practically empty still, and this thing has quite a bit of power for the kind of games that we're putting onto it. It even runs Half-Life 1 beautifully, uh, which is surprising because it was made uh, before that time, so good for it. If We'll put anything on here that's Windows 2000 or older. So if you have anything like that that you want to send our way, please do bring it by the LAN and we'll throw it on here and see how well it runs. And uh, all sorts of cool little quirks about going back to this time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I really hope that uh, this brings back some nostalgia and memories for you as it did for me. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. We are gonna be doing a lot more modern stuff from here on out, but we wanted to show you a little bit of piece of our history and uh, hope to share that with you. So thanks for dropping by. Feel free to leave us a comment if there are any video games that you play as a kid that you would play on this rig, or uh, if there's anything else like this that you'd like to see us do on the channel. Thanks for watching, have a great day.